Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. I'm up here in Oriel Park. Delighted to be joined by none other than Michael Duffy. Michael, firstly, thanks very much for joining me. No bother. Um, we're going to just do, I suppose, we're coming obviously up to the start of the new season. And um, you're obviously one of the best players in the league from an outside point of view. You probably won't admit that yourself. But um, I just thought we'd do a, a piece basically on your career so far. Um, just firstly, how you kind of came about. What was it, what was it that made you fall in love with football? Um, probably my earliest memories of football would be um, when I was maybe eight or nine, maybe 2002 World Cup. I sort of remember that, like watching the matches in school and stuff. You know, I used to wheel out the TV. And then. I used to wheel out the TV, and we used to just get to sit and watch the matches. You know, instead of obviously yeah, doing anything teaching me. So that was probably my first memory, really, of. Um, I used to love that, like just love football then. and so that's probably whenever I started my seven or eight I actually just got into football. Probably a bit later in some like really and then that was me. I was just in love with it then really and I uh, just played it from then on. So uh, what what club did you start up playing with? When your your earliest Um uh, Foyle Herps, they're called. It's a wee local Foyle team Herps. in there, Foyle Herps. Uh, um I've heard them. A few like I think um Shane Duffy, he he played with them as well, um Patrick McLaney, he played with them as well. It's sort of just a local team around our area. But um, I played for Foyle Herbs right up until 16. Played for another local team, it was from um, just from my dad's from, just outside of the area, called Drum Tigers they were called. I uh, played with them as well from nearly 9 or 10 up to 16 as well, so I used to play a lot, <laughs> play a lot of football from from 9, 10 up to 16. Yeah, who, who was your biggest influence I suppose when you were, when you were growing up and in that time? Um, your dad? Probably, uh, probably my dad, I, he's... Uh, he used to manage my team for Herbs really, so I was on pens, free kicks, everything. And what was that like with the other with the other players? Because you you know you always have that thing of oh, son of the manager. No, and, it was uh, fine really. Um, we used to have a good bunch. We used to have a good team. Like and we stuck together. It was mostly the same team throughout the six seven years, and um, we won a lot of won a lot of leagues and won a lot of trophies and stuff. And uh, we had a good group. And um, I don't think there was ever really anything for the players you know against me because it's me but I used to get the brunt of some stuff <laughs> if we ever lost the game in that I would say after a match but um, no it was it was good like with some great memories I still have the trophies in the house you know of most of the cups we won yeah um, well, I suppose that's that's always a, a nice little thing to have um, and always a bit of banter then obviously when the manager is uh, the dad as well but kind of going on from there you went out to play for Derry then how did that kind of come about when did you start getting noticed I suppose as a real t talent? Um, it was, I think it went from one of the Foil Cup, the Foil Cup team, maybe under 16, under 17. I played for the under 19s, so I was three years younger. I played for under 19s in the Foil Cup and um, played a few games, scored a couple that year. We actually, we won, the, we won that age group then. And then after that, then I was just, you sort of go to the Derry Reserves then, you know, the Ulster Senior League team, you play with them. And then I think maybe 16 or 17 then I've sort of started just going and training a few days, you know, a couple of days whenever they needed players maybe on the first team and stuff. And then who, who was managing Derry uh, at that time? Declan Devine was managing them then. Okay. He was managing now from you? Uh, he was, ma he was uh, so he was, he was great for me really, he'd give me my debut and stuff and um, it was slow at the start, you know, I was just coming on in games and uh, got had a few starts under him really and then once um, Roddy Collins took over, it was when Roddy Collins and Peter Hutton then throughout that year. That's the whenever, squad. Uh, that's whenever I pl that's whenever I pl like was uh, regular starter in for a day. Yeah, well, kind of uh, over the uh, course of time, then you got fifty-seven appearances, thirteen goals, and then you got to move to Celtic. So how did that kind of transpire? Yeah, that sort of came from just me. My last year at Derry, I think I was actually sixteen goals at full. That's Wikipedia, so don't, uh, that's don't Wikipedia. Blame me. <laughs> I think that's just the league st sort of goals. I think it was, um, but I think I had eleven in the league that year, uh, and a few in the cup, and one in Euro or two in Europe that year. And uh, obviously, you know, had a good year. Uh, I think we only finished seven or eight, though. We didn't have a brilliant season, but around Europe, we sort of we picked up a lot of ones then, and we were we were good come the end of the year. Would, would that have been maybe you kind of see it with some teams as well? Is that the European run kind of disrupts the? I suppose domestic season. Yeah, but but did you find that? Th we uh, once Europe kicked on after Europe, we actually went on a great run of games. Then, 
you know, unt until maybe the last two months of the season, then we dipped a bit then. But um, and we got the cup final that year. Uh, we got beat by Pats in the cup final. And then sort of just after that season, then it came about. I went on a couple of trials. I went to Brentford, and I went to Celtic, and it sort of just it actually didn't happen to the very end of January on the last day. Yeah. I didn't think it was going to happen. Really, it was sort of came at a shock then because I went and I went over to Celtic for a week, didn't play a game, and then came back and then went over again and played uh, played against Newcastle down there, you know, there under twenty threes yeah. or whatever. Like the development squad. Their development yeah. squad, I, and um, scored two in the game, and we won 3-0 three, three or 3-1 three it was. So after that I was sort of thinking then that there's, there could be something from this, you know, you're on trial, you score two, you're sort of thinking, how could you yeah, do it? Yeah, it, it, it really always like? makes a, a good impression when you get goal, it's yeah. nice stand out more, obviously. But um, nothing really, this was, I think this was around Christmas maybe, or just after Christmas, and then I went on trial to Brentford for a couple of days, Patrick McGonney was there as well, me and him. And um, they uh, they were offering like a they offered a deal like a, but I was in contract with her at the time so they had a but you know had to be bought out of it and then from that then as soon as they sort of made an offer and Celtic came on then did, so, did any of the managers like first team manager at the time right and speech he was he would have been the first team manager at the time uh, at Brentford no at Celtic at Celtic was Ronnie Dela oh Ronnie yeah, yeah. Dela he was manager did he speak to you or anything like that or was it was no, it not then no, it was sort you? of just the scout like the scouts and the development manager sort of my deal went through then yeah. um I didn't speak and I didn't speak to the manager until it was all signed and I was on training like the yeah. next day it sounds kind of similar because there's two lads now at Celtic Lee O'Connor and uh, Jonathan Afalabi and yeah they've been put into the de development, development squad, squad yeah. and now kind of they've gone on loan to uh, Johnson's gone to Dunfermline and Lee's gone to Partick Tissot. So that kind of brings me on to you went to Alloa. Yeah. How did that kind of, uh, was it a case of you were doing well in the development squad and then you had to be quite unknown or how did the loan move come about? Um, that was just sort of game to like Celtics obviously there was a massive squad there really and um, it's kind of like that now. Pretty yeah much, I, came ba I, I came back, I came back, was actually going okay in pre-season you know, for the first two weeks I trained with the first team and stuff and but I think I just needed games really, and he said about getting out and playing. And Alba won the Scottish Championship then, so I went there. But I still tra I still trained at Celtic throughout the week, and, and just played with just Alba. Played with Alba but they were uh, part time, so they were they trained Tuesday, Thursday, played obviously on the Saturday. So I'd done that. So I was actually doing a lot. Like I was on at Celtic nearly every day, and then them two training sessions. Um, but that was a good year. Even like we got relegated, but I enjoyed. I played. I played the full year. Played in some big games and stuff. You know, Rangers was in uh, that league that year. Rangers and Hubs. You know, you're playing in them big stadiums and Hearts stuff. And, that and uh, no Hearts. I don't think Hearts was on it. Okay. And um, but Hubs, Hubs and Rangers. So they were two big games. You know, I, I was. And obviously you couldn't make it Celtic because you were on loan from Celtic. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I enjoyed my time there. Really, I'm. Uh, well, you had to, Got, Wikipedia says 34 appearances, 3 yeah. goals, now you can correct me if that's no, wrong. No, it's, it's right, I wish it was correct me a bit more, but um, that's right, really. Um, it was tough, like we got relegated and there was a few games where you weren't. I wasn't seeing much of the ball really, but um, near the end of that year, that's probably where I played my best, sort of for Alwyn, the last maybe four or five months, we, we had a new manager in and we picked up a few results then, but we still, you know, we, we were too many points off. It's probably but, um, too little, too late. Yeah. Isn't it? But we had a few, you know, we a few big um, draws and a couple of ones near the end of the year, um, and then that's where it came about. I think where I got me loan for the next year, then you know, from just having a good end of the season there at Alba. Yeah, and then you went on loan to Dundee. Did that? Did you go back to Celtic um, at the end of that season? Did you pre-season and then go to Dundee? Or how no, did it was sort of like as soon as I came back for pre-season. I sort of had, you know, I knew that Dundee was um, looking for me the year after, and I sort of just in my head, I sort of want, wanted to go for that. I know, you know, in the Scottish Premiership, it would have been a, a good, uh, good experience for me, really, to get out and play and you know, at that level. And um, so, as soon as I came back, it was literally a day or two pre-season, and I just, you know, it, it got done really, and I was up there then uh, full time. Yeah, you know when you're on loan at Celtic and you're playing for the likes of Alloa, do they be keeping an eye on your games? I know you because you said you're training actually with Celtic, obviously with Alloa. Yeah. And so, but they be monitoring monitoring your games. I think uh, most you, like, co like, there's obviously there's contact with there you. was a good few boys um, out in loan. You know, at the same time, um, there was another boy from Celtic. He was there with me, 
Um, and when we would come in on a Monday or Tuesday, you know, they'd always ask us, you know, how was the game? And most of the time, they'd be one of the development coaches would be there, you know, watching the game. So uh, they always they always kept an eye on it. They always um, knew how we were getting on. Yeah, yeah. Your time kind of at Dundee was kind of short lived. You were back then. Yeah. In Dundalk, how did that come about? It started off well at Dundee. Really, um, I played the first few games, uh, and we I think we won our first game up in Ross County. Um, Pucked up a few results and stuff, uh, but then it just sort of dipped really, and we went on a bad run of games, and um, the manager started changing it up, you know, changing the formation up, and it sort of wasn't really suiting me really, and that was me. I think I was out of the team around Halloween really, and then couldn't really get back in at all. You know, they started January, then would have been. Uh, they started picking up really, and um, and I just thought I just needed a change, and really come January, um, Dundalk was offer an end, like um. You know, for me to come back home really and um it took me a while to decide because you know, I didn't I still had a year and a half I think left or maybe a year over there you no know, just because I could have just went back and went alone somewhere else maybe just to stay and give it a try but I just thought it was the best thing for me you know just to come home and uh Dundalk just after they actually just got to Europe the year before you know Patrick was yeah, here so I was did, chatting did. to him a lot about it and he was saying how good it was here and like um they obviously you know they won the league I've would always watched, you know, watch them in Europe and stuff, and it seemed to be really good. So that sort of swung me on the edge, and I was like, uh, I just thought it was the best thing for me. Yeah, because obviously you mentioned that they were, they were playing, you know, big European teams at the time, and you're obviously playing against them in pre-season. We'll get to that later on. But from your point of view, did Stephen Kenny did he, did he sell you, or was it Patrick McElhenney you kind of sold you? To um, no, it was both really. Like I was chatting to Stephen a lot. Um, and uh, Stephen, knew, Stephen knew you know of me really, and saying how much he wanted me at the club, and uh, how much he would want you know, want they work, want me to work under him and stuff. And uh, uh, Patrick was just telling me about Europe really, and what way they work, you know, and training and stuff, and how uh, competitive it is, and the group and stuff. And I would, he, th he thought I would fit him well, really, and um, it didn't really take much persuading then, really, when it was. When uh, I got speaking to them, and uh, you know, happily I done it really because it's probably been the best you new know, three years really in my career so far here. Yeah, what, what's what's Stephen Kenny like as a manager? Because obviously he's gonna he's twenty one's manager now at the moment. He's left on dark and left a big legacy behind him. Yeah. It, like he's obviously a big huge legend up here. Yeah. Um, but what's he like as as a as a manager? Like people say he's brilliant motivator and stuff like that. But what's what's an insight to the, as because you're obviously one of his be better players. But what's a, an insight to the, the manager Stephen Kenny from a player like yourself? Well, he's brilliant for me, really. Like, um, just brought so much confidence out of me, really. Um, you know, he loves the attackers, really. Gives him so much freedom and uh, just always trying to get the best out of me, really. And it worked. You know, I just love love playing under him, really. And uh, I fit it on as. Like as soon as I got here, within a month, really, it felt like I was here a long time. It's just the way the squad made me feel, the way he made me feel, and um, just every game, just give me the freedom, really, to do well, just sort of do what you want, sort of thing. He obviously left on a very high note. He's won the double, I believe. Um, you were PFL Player of the Year. Yeah. Um, what was that season like? Ah, uh, that was uh, that was brilliant. Really, it's probably a season I'll never I'll never forget. Um, between yourself and Pat Huber, I mean, you had some, some partnership. I mean, he had 29 goals, I think he finished on. You had a serious amount of goals as well and assists to him. Yeah, as well. uh, we, had a, we had a brilliant year like, linking up with each other. and um, He was great to play along with, really. It was, he just came back that year too. and um, No, that was a brilliant season. Uh, went and done the double. Um, we go into the fact that Patrick Huber came back and David McMillan had left. So again, that was big shoes to fill again. But Stephen Kenny seemed to be a master of bringing in yeah. players to replace other players that had left, and Daryl Horgan and, and other yeah. players. I suppose you were, you were the replacement for Daryl Horgan, I suppose yeah. you could say. So what was it like? Because again, I go into big shoes to fill. What was that like for yourself? And then obviously, I haven't seen Pat coming. It must be good to know you have a manager that if you do lose players, yeah. you ha he's able to identify it and bring in replacements that are either as good as or better. Yeah, that's what I mean. It just falls so much confidence, really, and. Um, and me straight away, I was I knew how good Daryl Horgan was, and he got his move off um, how good he was in Europe, really, and that 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 year for Dundalk. And but as soon as I got into like 
and then undock and after a month or two like I wasn't really thinking on that it wasn't in my head I think it's just the way they the way Stephen was we really like didn't put a lot of pressure on you in that way and I think it was the same way Pat because it was it was obviously a lot of pressure on Pat too and then look what he done his first year back and you know, we went and broke all them records really and he, you know the many goals he scored that year was a joke. So just onto them the transition I suppose from from Stephen Kenny to Vinnie Perth. Vinnie was obviously within the club either either way yeah. but Again, this was like talking about shoes to fill, and Vinny had to come in with big shoes to fill. There was obviously the the famous, you know, the the Shamrock Rovers as champions and waiting yeah. line that was going around. Um, yeah. What was that like for yourselves? I know you take games in hand and stuff like that, but did you just always believe that you could claw that gap back, or what was your kind of thinking um, at the time? I we did like we never we never give up at all. Really, you know, we knew it was going to be a long year. Um, it was going to be a spell where there was going to be a lot of games, and it could happen a few times last year. You know, when Quick succession. I don't know how many games we played at one stage, but within yeah, the Monday Friday month, games, uh, it was crazy. Like ideal, so, we just knew that. Just dig in, really. It was early days. Like that, um, we were a lot of points behind. We didn't have a great start, but obviously we went on that run then, and you know it was it was an unbelievable run we went on. It clawed the, clawed it back big time, really, and pushed us on. So, what what was Vinny like in terms of getting the, the gap back? What was he saying to his you know after games and stuff like that? Was he Positive towards it was he was he hounding at us or what kind of way was he going about things? Um, Seems it, like a calm guy. He was calm, but he obviously we went through them, but the two bad defeats I think really made the gap to thirteen points. I think at the stage, you know, when we got bit by Pats and Sligo, and he went through us then really, you know, um, and we deserved it really because it was nothing on them. It was it was us who wasn't performing, you know, up the up to that point really, you know, because since the. the uh, Vanny took over and that they were brilliant really with us and um, it was just us underperformed um, but he just kept confidence in us and he knew him, so he knew that there was still a long way to go uh, he knew he could get the best out of us and you know that he did really he just he, ke- he kept us going yeah and it also I noticed more he, he was having a bit more of a squad rotation where Brian Gartland was maybe getting dropped and Daniel Cleary was coming in yeah. and then January came or sorry the, the summer came in he's got Andy Boyle and he was just identifying key areas of the pitch to bring in big players and big personalities that seem to get his I wouldn't say over the line because he's yeah. obviously went comfortably in the end but he seems to be very good at again at identifying players to come in and obviously when Pat Huberman wasn't scoring and Georgie Kelly coming off the yeah. bench and scoring as well I was like he, he built up a brilliant squad first last year and um, the rotations throughout the team all that like in all the positions you know on the many midfielders played defenders all their games all last year was a uh, it was unbelievable, really, and and that's through tough games as well. You know, through Europe, when there's a lot of games, it, there was nearly four or five changes for a few games, and I um, mean, we were still winning, still digging in, and he just had so much confidence in the team. You know that he could play anyone at any time, really, and uh, that helped us out. Helped us through that long run, you know, because you need that sometimes. Yeah, and last season was obviously a very successful season, bar the FAI Cup final. We don't go into that too much. But just how how do you kind of better off last season? You won the EA Sports Cup up in Derry. Um, you won the Presidents Cup down in Cork, and then you won obviously the league. You scored that one the goal against Shamrock Rovers. Yeah. Um, so you basically won the league here that night. But how do you kind of go and the United the Nations Cup is won as well? It's funny enough. Um, so how do you kind of better from last season? Is is the European football a, a big? Thing that he's want to focus on this season as well as obviously what he's have won previously. Um, definitely, uh, Europe's a bit, Europe's a big thing for us. Um, I think obviously last year that's really where we that was our downfall last year in Europe. Um, we didn't really you know we didn't perform as well as we wanted to, and I think that this year we're, you know, we're building towards that. Um, obviously we want to go and do we want to win everything domestically again. You know, obviously we got the stage last year. Um, they won the treble. You know, it hasn't really been. Has it's obviously Derry, Derry done it, and not many teams have had the opportunity. But I feel like this year, well, we want to be in the same position come the end of the season. You know, domestically, we want to be trying to go for the treble again. You know, why can't we really with such a squad? And um, after 
after having such a great year, you know, we should be pushing on now, really. And then once Europe comes this year again, you know, everyone knows that we need to be better, and um, that's going to be massive for us this year. Yeah, it's so basically challenging, kind of on all fronts, I suppose, similar to yeah, similar to last season, but maybe yeah. obviously get that last trophy. So how was how was pre season been? Um, you signed a couple of new players, Will Patchy and uh, Greg Sloggett, and Greg Sloggett, Jeff and Derry yeah. as well. Who uh, who has gone a little bit under the radar? A lot of people are saying how good he is. What's he like in training? Hi, Greg's been brilliant. All the signings have been very good since he came in. Um, obviously, Wall got a bit unlucky over in Spain. You know, he's, he's hurt his shoulder um, as soon as he came on, really, in the, in the first game. But apart from, you know, Wall was brilliant, really. He's um, brilliant on the ball and stuff. And um, Greg, Greg's been very good since he came in. He's, you know, he's strong. He's a big athlete, really. And they've all fitted him well. And Dara Lee, too. You know, Dara was brilliant in the game here. Um, it's great to see him back from injury as well. Yeah, against UCD, put on a couple of great balls, you know, and uh, I enjoy playing, you know, playing in front of him, and they've all fitted in really well, and I think they're, you know, they're great additions to this. Yeah, and what's what's it been like as you played Cluj and CSK Moscow? So was that something that you just wanted? I think I read online that it was you just wanted to have this these types of teams to play against because um, obviously with European football, so yeah. just testing yourself against better opposition than you normally, I suppose, on, in, in previous pre-seasons would have played? Aye, big time. Like, we were going away, you know, when everyone was looking forward to the games, big time. Uh, we were playing against Clues, who's in the last 16 now, in a couple of months. And then CSK, you know you know how big CSK Moscow are, really. Yeah. You know, the past few years when we've been to Spain, they've been at the, you know, where we stay. You know, they've been they, they've been there for six weeks doing their mini pre-season sort of thing, so... We've always wanted to play them as well, you know, but they'd be they'd be busy enough. So it was great to it was great to play them as well, and um, it's just a good test for us. Like you want to play against them, you know, top teams, and um, we don't we don't we've done very good against them. We have done very well. Um, I actually had a guy who was a, does analytics, and he, he asked us if we could ask you questions. He said, "Hi Paul, could you ask Michael about the use of performance analysis? Do they have a, an analyst?" Providing individual player clips and statistics, and how much emphasis is placed on opposition analysis. Um, he said it'd be interesting to hear the perception of PA and if he thinks it makes a difference. And that's from at Analytics JM on Twitter. Yeah, asked you that. Um, well, we use uh, we use a stat sports. You know, well, I think a few teams use that now, um, and that's brilliant. Really, it gives you everything. You know, from your distances, um, your max speed, your many. Um, like your mass runs and games, you know, like your at high speeds and stuff like that, and uh, it, and then we have our own sort of like it would show me where I'd be in the pitch mostly, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. So it's like good to see it's the it. sort of heat map thing, and uh, so that'd be good to see, you know, if you want to look at a few games, like what you what you done different here and what you done different there. So, um, you know, we used them a lot last year, but I think we'll probably use them a lot more this year as well. So yeah. they're they're good, like they're good. They they show even. And and a team, I think it shows our formation and stuff. You know, as the full team, what sort of position everyone be's in. Yeah, and even the your game, shape as well. Your shape as well. So that, they're so. very good. To, you know, they're good to look at. Yeah. So well, there you are. Anyway, that's uh, that question answered. Then lastly, I just kind of ask you internationally. You were called up by Martin O'Neill previously. Um, declared officially for Ireland. Do you view your papers now? That's all. I sorted. think it's. I think it's all through now. It's all sorted. Now. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, for some reason, at the time. You never really got to, to play. There's been a lot of players in the League of Ireland now. It's been called Graham Burke, uh, Jack Byrne, even James Talbot was training in Ireland, yeah. uh, Shane Supple as well. Um, so what, what are your kind of thoughts uh, on, on that? You know, Do you think that if you have a good season now at Dundalk that perhaps you could maybe get a look in? Especially at, probably at the time, halfway through the season, is saying, God yeah. bless, we get to the Euros. But maybe after that, um, if Stephen Kenny comes in, he might be, may, you may have a chance because you've worked previously with him. Yeah. Um, hopefully, like, that's obviously something that you know I'd love to. I'd love to um, be involved with the Ireland teams. Hopefully, get a cap someday. You know, seeing what Jack done this year, you know, it was unbelievable. Um, you know, it was class. Obviously, seeing someone in your league you play against, you know, come on and he done so well in the games as well. And um, so that's obviously a goal most pe- most people in the league, you know, would, would love to do. And um, don't really think about it throughout the year. You know, throughout the year, like last year, I wasn't really in my head. You know, getting called up. I sort because we had so many games. You sort of just take your own, just thinking about one in every week, really. And then hopefully that call up happens someday. You know, and I'll be just thinking the same this year. I just want to try to play as best I can throughout the year. And you know, if that stage comes, then you know it'll be that's obviously a massive plus. 
Yeah, I think it, I think obviously if that if that does happen, obviously we're speaking hypothetically here, but uh, the fact that you've worked with Stephen would obviously help out, and I'd say he probably played the type of football that you're used to as well. So that, yeah. that may be something as well. Yeah, that would be good. You know, obviously Stephen's going to take over, and you know it's a, it's a massive job, and there's a, there's a lot of players they look at, um, a lot of players to choose from and stuff. So it sort of just depends on myself. I need to be playing well at that time. You know, if I want to even have a chance of of getting called up, so. Just sort of see how, it, how it's going around that time and um, hopefully I'm playing you know, uh, at a good level. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think we'll, we'll leave it at that. I just want to say thanks very much for your time. No Absolute pleasure. Um, what, what, is it, what is your social media handle so that people can go and follow you? I'll have, put, I'll have it underneath your, your name there. But um, can you remember Michael Duff's Michael underscore? Duff's underscore. I think that's it. We'll, you got we'll, it right there. We'll put it under, under your name anyway. Uh, let us know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And um, we'll speak to you soon. Thanks for watching.